Hi, this is Mr. Chuck Shellhorn with AP Psych Review Operant Conditioning. As you may recall, Operant Conditioning was um, started by B.F. Skinner, and he looked at ways to look at contingencies, to look at consequences, to try to manipulate and modify people's behavior. So when we look at shaping behavior, what we're trying to do is to learn how we can modify an organism's behavior using the most effective means possible. In, in order to do that, we will use reinforcement and punishment. One quick tip, though, is that each organism interprets this differently. Quick example, when I was back doing some student teaching, I was in a middle school, and a, a, a kid at the school was constantly in trouble. And I had a chance to talk with him, and I said, why, why are you always in trouble? D doesn't this bother you? And he says, no, I kind of like it. It's the only attention I ever get. And so I've always carried that with me in terms of operant conditioning. What was meant to be a punishment for him was actually serving as a reinforcer. So here's reinforcement and punishment, and this is the overview that I give my classes. And when we look at understanding reinforcement and punishment, we have to think of it in terms of positive and negative. Adding a stimulus, removing a stimulus. We can't look at it as... Um, uh, any other way. We have to look at it as an addition. It's a, a, a subtraction. It's a math thing. So uh, reinforcement is a label that we put on afterward to describe an increase in behavior. And we can look at punishment, the label afterwards, to describe a decrease in behavior. And so with positive reinforcement, we are adding a pleasant consequence. We are adding a consequence after a behavior occurs that it is emitted on the part of an organism so that hopefully the behavior will be done again. If we, are, if, if we as the uh, behavior manipulators are doing this properly, that means that the behavior is going to be occurring again because that means that we've, we've understood what uh, is going to work with this particular uh, individual. However, with negative reinforcement, that's when we are taking away, we are removing an aversive stimulus or stimuli. When we are doing that, um, we're not just you know, giving praise like we would over here. So when, when, uh, when we're looking at uh, positive reinforcement, we are looking at adding something nice. So, oh, here's some cash, or good job, way to go, or hey, can I hug you? That was an awesome thing that you just did. And so that's going to be positive reinforcement for most people. However, negative reinforcement is going to be removing something that's unpleasant. A classic example is when you sit down in your car. If you're the driver, the seat, or the, if you don't, until you buckle your seatbelt, there's going to be a buzz. And that's an annoying buzz. It's an, an aversive stimulus. Because it's an aversive stimulus, it encourages you to buckle your seatbelt. And once you do that, then you are going to get rid of that aversive stimulus. Same thing when um, you're playing with a little brother or sister or cousin and they have you in a headlock or some other uncomfortable position and they, and they make you say, oh, you're the greatest cousin in the world or you're the best brother in the world. And when that occurs, you have done the desired behavior and so they take away the, uh, the aversive stimuli. Punishment, this is where people get really confused and so you've got to be careful with this one. Something that's called positive punishment is not positive because it is nice. It's when you add the aversive stimulus. It's when you add aversive stimuli in general. You're adding an aversive. You're adding an unpleasant thing. So when someone gets spanked, we're assuming that that's something that people don't like, and so that's going to decrease the behavior. When someone gets slapped on the wrist, you, you know the old stereotype of the Catholic school nuns using the rulers and slapping the back of the hands of the students when they engaged in undesirable behavior. They added that aversive stimuli to that circumstance. So when you get a dirty look from a, a girlfriend or boyfriend when you do or say something that they don't like, that will make it so that you're less likely to do, to do that behavior. Now, negative punishment is still punishment. It's designed to decrease the behavior from occurring, but it does so by removing pleasant stimuli. It's removing pleasant stimuli. So you don't get to use your car anymore. 
most people think of their car as a really pleasant stimulus. And so if they can't use that, that would be having that removed to be an example of negative punishment. So for a, uh, a boyfriend or girlfriend to say, hey, no more hugs for you, that's going to be negative punishment. If you remember Jerry Seinfeld, no soup for you. Uh, the, 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 the chef was saying, basically, you can't have this pleasant stimulus until you do the appropriate behavior or because you're not doing the appropriate behavior. So negative punishment is when you can remove uh, a pleasant stimulus um, when someone is not doing the appropriate behavior. How the labels work? The label of reinforcer or punisher is only applied after a behavior has increased or decreased. We can plan punishments and reinforcements, but we can't actually label them appropriately until afterwards. We may want something to be a punisher or reinforcer, but it is up to the organism and its response. So we can plan, but it doesn't always work out that way. So that's a quick overview of operant conditioning.